It's come to my attention that Linus and his minion Alex, who personally declares that he is only great-ish on Twitter, recently posted a 3D Mark score that surpassed our own. So, we're gonna fix that. Featuring the hashtag RIP LTT water block, a Titan V, and a 7980XE that we've pushed significantly further than our last overclocking attempt. This video is brought to you by the Gamers Nexus Anti-Static Mod Mat. Our Mod Mat uses a high quality anti-static surface with a rubberized finish. We also have a custom paint job on it which includes reference points and cheat sheets for PCIe, EPS 12 volt and other power cables along with quick reference thermal paste application guides, a screw sorter for your video card teardowns, and it includes a common ground point and a grounding strap to help protect the products you are working on from electrostatic discharge. Order your mat now at the link in the description below. So breaking down the basics really quickly. First of all, we're gonna have a live stream on this. Right now what we're doing is we're building up the Titan V in a custom loop to prepare it for this test. And secondarily, what we'll be doing is a live stream showing the overclocking process as we try to overtake Linus Tech Tips score on the 3D Mark charts. We'll also submit it to HardwareBot because we know how to do that, unlike some people. So uh, it should be pretty fun. It's just kind of a, a media rivalry thing. And I really, I, Linus and crew, I strongly encourage you to just try and counter me. Try and come at me after this because uh, we'll see if you can. See, you may have all the money in the world. I guess that's really all you need, but we'll try anyway. So, uh, okay, what we've got is an EK Waterblocks block for the Titan V. It's, as far as I'm aware, the first of its kind officially. We did a hybrid mod previously. This will be much better because it is full coverage. It'll contact all the VRM components and everything, uh, HBM, GPU, VRM, all the stuff will be good to go. And then we're gonna stick a 360 on it and we're considering the option of chilling the radiator in ice water or dry ice or something like that, but we might not even need to because frankly, Linus's score doesn't impress me that much. So we'll save that for perhaps the retaliation in the future. As far as the scoring, for anyone who saw or followed up on our previous live stream with the Titan V and the 7980XE, we placed about top 10. Now that was largely because you could buy your way to the top these days, but we did also do some actually pretty good overclocking on the Titan V. What we didn't do is have uh, all four channels on the X299 motherboard. We only used two sticks of memory. This time we've got four, and we've done some work with Buildzoid tuning everything. So I th think we'll all be pretty impressed with the results, but we'll save all that for the live stream. Today, uh, let's start out with putting this block on the Titan V. I've already pre-stripped it down, gotten rid of the old uh, air cooler that was on there. And then I think we just need to cut the loop to size and get it on the bench and we'll be good to go. The CPU will not be part of this loop. We're gonna isolate them so that the, uh, the, the thermal capacity of each loop is sort of fully contained within itself, one 360 for each, and that should take care of everything very nicely. Pascal and Volta in this case both are extremely sensitive to temperature. Every five degree reduction or thereabouts will get you notable gains in frequency. And when we're talking about fighting over single to double digit points and fire strike and time spy, that'll matter. Uh, so that's the plan. We're gonna mostly be competing in time spy extreme. Let's get on with the build process. Okay, so we need to start with thermal pads. I have a lot of thermal pads. And although unnecessary, we're gonna use some of the really good stuff. Uh, as soon as I find it, we're gonna put quite a bit of money worth of probably the uh, Fuji poly pads on here. And we need one millimeter. And those will go on the VRM components. How big is this? All right, so we've got some ultra extreme one millimeter pads that we're gonna put on there. And then I'm gonna use some cryonaut. We, we've done a lot of thermal compound testing lately. And although often within margin of error, cryonaut tends to come out on top or close to it. So we're gonna use cryonaut on the middle and then Fuji poly for the pads. And we might not have enough here for all of it, but we'll see how far we can get. Let me scrape off some of the old ones first. Nice, brand new thermal pad. 
Okay, so those are some really expensive thermal pads I just put on there. And they are to spec, they're the right size and everything. Now we're gonna do a bunch of thermal paste. We should be good. Uh, that's not great coverage. Should be mostly good on pads. So now we need to do thermal paste. And uh, for this part, you can manually spread it on this GPU and I've done it. But uh, first of all, Cryonaut spreads out a lot. It's non-conductive. And when I say spreads out a lot, I mean it's very liquidy. The fact that it's non-conductive means we don't have to worry about SMDs on the sides of the substrate outside of the interposer area. So what we're going to do is just an X pattern with then some spot check dots where they are really needed. HPM's on the corners, as always. And the GPU itself, of course, the larger die in the middle. Uh, people in the comments are going to say things about either being too much or too little thermal paste. They are complaining about things that don't actually matter. Don't listen to them. They're incorrect. Uh, so with GPUs, there is zero tolerance. If you miss a corner of the GPU with paste, depending on what's in that corner, you, you could end up killing it from heat. They seriously have no tolerance uh, for over temperature for spot temperatures. So this has worked very well for ours and uh, we're just gonna do more of it. Okay, so next step, we're gonna start installing the block and this will just sock it down very easily. It's gonna be a much better cooling solution than our previous one, although our previous one was very good, the custom made hybrid that we did The back plate here, I think, technically is optional. Uh, it's going to mount on just like that. And we do, it looks pretty nice, actually, that brushed look. We do need to get some thermal pads on there, and we also need a couple of mounting screws in there to secure us uh, to start with, and then we can do the rest. So six screws will be omitted to add the mount, the back plate. All right, cool. So we have all of them in that we need. Uh, we need to put six more screws in. Those are not going to go in until this plate is on. So this is the next step. And I need to put on the uh, uh, some thermal pads before this as well. Okay, so we took a pause to go publish some content on CTS Labs, which you should definitely watch or read. But we're back now. So the next step is to drop one of these thermal pads. We're just going to use the included ones for this because it's not really that important. Uh, we're going to drop this right here between the two screw points and the other one will go somewhere in this area. We'll find out in a second though, once I can line it up. So first of all, so this will give us a little bit of transfer to the back plate. I'm actually going to add a thermal pad that they don't specify and stick one on the back of the GPU. Now, this won't do a lot for us, but any amount of additional transfer when we're overclocking and kind of pushing it, and we should use a square one, but I'll just put a couple of these. Any kind of high-end overclocking like this, every fraction of a degree is going to help. So in this instance, we can conduct stuff from uh, into the back plate and then just hit it with a fan and dissipate that, uh, that energy. All right. That's looking pretty good. Okay. All right, last couple screws. There should be six here. And this will secure the back plate. We're going to have a minimal amount of dissipation. This is really primarily for looks, as we've demonstrated in the past. However, again, any small amount of help we can get will take at this point uh, for this endeavor. So then we get to flip it over, see how it looks, add all the fittings to everything. And uh, from there, we'll just have to fill the loop, get the pump situated, which we have a pretty nice pump to go with our 360. So the GPU will be completely isolated in its own loop. 
and uh, probably won't be using the Vardars that come with this. They're very good fans for noise normalized performance. However, uh, we want absolute performance. We're probably going to use Sunon uh, maglevs, or, which is the supplier for the Corsair maglev fans, or something to that effect. Uh, maybe Corsair maglevs, although we have those on our CPU already, so might go with Sunon for the others. Is that the blue supposed to come off? Okay, why you do this? Okay. Don't worry, the thing to prevent fingerprints caused them. All right, so there we go. Forgot that I wrote that on there. So there's the RIP LTT Titan V. Looking pretty damn good. Uh, let's take a closer look at this. So uh, do you have an okay shot of the micro fins or of the text is really what I'm asking. Uh, so this is really just my way of taking more time to get this in the shot. You can see the micro fins over the GPU. So this central block right there covers the GPU die. The HPM is really low heat flux. HPM2 is low heat flux. Uh, it's not as much of a concern at all for cooling, but cooling it will certainly help. The GPU does respond much more significantly though to the reductions. So uh, we'll have liquid come in through one side, go out the other. It's gonna go through these micro fin channels and uh, whisk away, or wick away rather, the heat through the fins, and then it'll just be dissipated once it gets into the radiator and the fans blow through the, uh, the, alum the copper fins in the case of this particular cooling unit. So that's the primary setup. We have really damn good thermal pads on there. They are in fact making contact. I'm just looking down the card right now to double check that. So they are making contact on both sides, it would appear. Yes, great. So we've got really good contact with the pads. We have excellent uh, top class thermal paste on there with Cryonaut. And now we just need to prepare the loop, which is something we'll do off camera because that'll have to run a leak test for 24 hours. Yeah, that screw's not in there, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> so run a leak test for about 24 hours before turning the card on, the system on. And the next step is basically what we're gonna do is set up a pump. This is gonna go on the bench, so this will be done just before the stream when we do get around to streaming. You've got your in and outlets on it, and uh, we'll just connect some fittings on there, which EK was kind enough to, when I told them I wanted to take Linus down, uh, support in any way they could find possible. So, so they sent us some pretty nice fittings for that. We'll install those and uh, not like that though, install those. And then we also have um, some coolant they sent, which uses their cryofuel branded. It's just, it's, it's just basically a mixture of distilled water and some other uh, maybe propylene glycol or whatever they, I don't know their exact composition, chemical composition, but we've got some of that. It is blue colored. So thank you EK for looking out for the GN colors and repping. Um, you know, maybe if Linus starts begging as well, uh, something he certainly is more skilled at. You could use orange for him. That would just be my recommendation. Uh, and, and he probably will come and beg for some help at some point because he'll need it. So that's the, that's the pump. We've got the radiator. It's a 360. As stated, we'll use some really nice fans on it. And by really nice, I mean 3,000 RPM. And, uh, and then see where it goes from there. It's going to be super loud, very cool and efficient. Our limitation is actually going to be ambient temperature. Uh, so perhaps if it, if it snows again, we'll set it up outside. Otherwise, there's always the option of running the card off of a riser for a negligible, invisible performance hit, and then running the, uh, the radiator in a tank. Now, unfortunately, I'd have to take the, the card apart, wrap it in shop towel for condensation control, uh, oh, you know what? We should, um, let's see. Hmm. I just remembered something. We haven't messed with the Titan in a little while. I have a secret weapon that we're going to add. Uh, the last content piece we did on this thing was shorting shunts. And it got us about 3% more performance. And there was a, there were it did pretty well overall. So I think what I'm going to do off camera is potentially dismantle this. And it's not that hard to put back together. It'll take 
10 minutes and then throw some liquid metal on those shunts, short them out and we'll get another couple percent out of the thing. Or I could save it because I don't think I'll need that much health. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, check back soon for the live stream. I do not have a date yet, but uh, we will definitely be announcing it via Twitter. And we're trying to give everyone a heads up. It's going to depend on uh, production timelines and things like that. I think we're trying to sync up with Linus's video. They're posting some kind of OC video with the Titan V where they, they took a Time Spy Extreme top 10 spot. So they're gonna be posting that soon. Be sure to watch it because we're gonna respond to that with a live stream and try and beat their score. And by try, I mean beat their score. Uh, and then uh, we'll see if they respond to that for a bit of fun between media outlets. So that's the, that's the plan. To catch the updates, again, twitter.com slash gamersnexus. If you're a Patreon backer on patreon.com slash gamersnexus, you can join our Discord, where I will announce it to all of you directly and personally. And otherwise, we'll try and mention it in other videos. But it, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you don't miss it. Do a lot of overclocking. I've got some help from Buildzoid uh, in the prep work. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a mod mat like the one I was operating on today. Our next round comes in end of month and will ship end of month, very early April. Uh, we completely sold out last time. So get an early if you want one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.